Images of all these viruses at the very beginning of the movie constitute spoilers, and I was not warned. No one would have believed in the early years of the 21st century that our world was being watched by intelligences greater than our own. No one? You're saying no one at all would believe that? Mr. Freeman, there are people on Earth who believe the presidential election was stolen even though these same election thieves didn't steal enough Senate seats to make one bit of difference. There are flat earthers, Mr. Freeman. There are people who actually think Star Wars is better than Star Trek. Honestly, somebody in deep space observing us is more believable than any of that, so no one. No one! Also, even though it's Morgan Freeman, we gotta ding the narration. Sorry, there are virtually no exceptions other than maybe Goodfellas or The Informant or something. And slowly and surely drew their plans against us. And in the darkness, bind them. When you walk through the garden, you gotta watch your back! Rumor has it that in order to prepare for this scene, Tom Cruise actually learned how to wear a baseball cap. You know what your problem is? I can think of a couple of women would be happy to tell you. Sadly, I can too. 8.30? Can we say that? You said 8 o'clock. Protagonist in a disaster movie is an undependable dad cliche. As she opens his fridge without permission, opens his milk without permission, and then declares he's out of milk, I would like to point out that while he may be woefully underprepared to host children, the ex-wife has zero right to be inspecting his sh like she's the CPS officer. But also, why does a single loser like Ray have so many f***ing magnets on his fridge and freezer? Why does he have a huge container of moisturizing pump lotion by the sink? Being prejudiced against the other 25 letters of the alphabet. A little old to still be sharing, aren't they? In a two-story house for damn sure. Not a man would slay Nazgul at CinemaSense. Why does Ray keep all the newspapers he doesn't read and stack them near the door on this gold rack? How does he afford the paper he has no time or inclination to read? He has more papers here than a newsstand. Tom Cruise throws this baseball so horribly that they have to cut in the middle of it to make sure it doesn't look too terrible. The guy can pilot goddamn jets but can't throw a baseball for sh**. It's not how you're gonna get through to him. Holy f did they write Rachel as 20 years old, but then cast Dakota Fanning and forget? What's the matter? Got a splinter. So, um, better I'm a loser, baby. It's gonna get infected. No, it won't. Yes, it's gonna get infected. No, it won't. Oh no, flashbacks to losing my virginity. You should get TiVo. Jesus Christ, it's so weird to hear someone so young talk about something so out of date. He says, we can see better from the backyard, and then runs back to this view. <laughs> Wait, his hoodie hood was just flapping up against his head, and now it's lying flat against his back! Oh my god! They shot these two different angles at two different times! Our movie's a lie! If history is any indication, Casey Affleck returned this child to Amy Ryan after being kidnapped by Morgan Freeman. <laughs> this f***ing guy. Holy sh! is it the 4th of July or what? Why do every single one of these houses have a big American flag out front? As a hellmouth opens in front of them, I continue to be astounded at how dumb Ray continues to be during this. This guy is f***ing laughing at this sh**. This is peak Spielberg! I am stunned at how many people want to be in this area while all this sh** is going down. Why isn't there a mass of people running away from this sh**? There are only, like, a few who actually do. A goddamn three-toed alien robot leg just came out of this hole and smashed a perfectly good Saturn. Run the f*** away! Okay, so earlier the news was abuzz with lightning storms in the Ukraine, but nothing about aliens. So did the aliens just sit there and wait? The ones here in New York come out to destroy stuff almost immediately. It's almost like the news reported something ominous so the movie could have its foreshadowing, but the aliens waited until they got close to the protagonist to start attacking. Oh my god! Why the f*** are you guys still here? Do you think that just because you turned a corner you're safe now? This f***ing alien ship is already destroyed destroyed multiple buildings and you think out of sight, out of mind. Walking this far out when you could easily just peek around the corner. Then the five-story robot that crawled out of the street makes a loud noise and you still don't run? F*** you, dude. Anything that happens to you from this point on is your own f***ing fault, dickhead. This is peak Spielberg. Absolute blind luck that Ray survives this series of events and I honestly think I'd rather see the movie where he dies here and the kids have to navigate everything themselves. Since no motorcycles are working, we'll have to settle on the Tom Cruise running in a movie cliche for now. He's basically free, but he stops to peek around this building because, despite all the horrifying deaths he's seen thus far, I guess he's still believing the tripod can redeem itself? Give me one good f***ing reason why Ray would stay here to watch. Making your kids breathe dead people dust. This probably will become useful later because of all the panicky humans, but I can't help but think that Ray is channeling his inner Black Widow and believes he can shoot the aliens down with this gun. Hey, hey, Ray! You are absolutely right. That is exact. I had to change this. This guy changed the solenoid in this van and it actually f***ing worked. I thought the EMP knocked out all the power to everything in the area. But this guy can change a f***ing solenoid and Ray's gonna drive this out of here with no problem. Never mind that the replacement solenoid would also be affected due to the power of the EMP, but all the other circuitry it takes to run a van. Get in, Manny, or you're gonna die. What do you okay. mean? Boy, Rachel is super upset.
Now she's not so upset. Man, these aliens went for broke, destroying everything as soon as Tom Cruise started driving out of here. God damn, this is way more destruction than was happening earlier when Cruise was downtown with a front row seat for it. There's definitely not one bit of space on the highway where this van can fit through, but when the movie cuts back to the highway level, there's apparently tons of space. So begins a long one take that lasts for about two and a half minutes. And it's cool, but there's like almost no reason for it. All the dialogue in this scene is, I have no idea what's going on, and Rachel freaking out, and Ray driving the van through this highway full of stalled cars. There's nothing all that exciting happening, so not sure what the point is, other than showing off. Shut up, Rachel! The movie will try and redeem this f***ing asshole. What was that thing you did with her? Or sometimes she gets yeah. claustrophobic. The movie has made it obvious he's a bad father, but exactly how long has it been since he's seen them? Are his visitation rights, like, once every five years? How come the lights are on here and not your place? Ah, uh, because... Nothing bad out there. Look, I have doubts this ultra precocious kid wouldn't know the answer to this question, but mainly, if they drove into an area where nothing bad happened, they would have seen cars driving down the highway and lights on everywhere before they got to this house. I'm Jack. allergic to peanut butter. Since when? Birth. We get it! He's the worst father ever! Let's go already! Low for Rachel. Is he a little nicer to me? Well, yes, he could, Rachel, but you were not exactly helping to encourage his niceness with your not niceness. This is the pot asking the kettle if it could try and be a bit more black. Wait, I think that came out wrong. Luckily, the basement of this house somehow has a door leading to an extra stairway leading into another cubby hole where they could avoid all the debris and fire that comes through. They get inside as the flames get inside, and somehow they shut the door and remain unburned. In other words, this f***ing works. How did the jet engine end up here, on fire? without impacting the desk and chair 12 inches away. Stealing. We were attached to a National Guard unit. The 83rd mechanized. They moved on one of those things around midnight. Did the aliens stop shooting EMPs? Because this National Guard unit was able to at least attempt an attack, and this news van embedded with them still operates completely fine. You ain't seen nothing yet. That is the most unnecessary shift position to the opposite side for no reason at all that I can remember seeing in a movie. That was actually very distracting. They come down in capsules, riding the lightning into the ground into the machines, right? That sounds needlessly complicated. So, the aliens already buried these tripods a long time ago with the idea that they would one day send capsules down via lightning to enter them? The f*** would they do that for? To look down, to look around me. Daring a kid to look around. Driving with a child draped across your chest. God damn, Goku is pissed. Apparently, the plane debris was kind enough not to block the road. Better go to the bathroom. Kids. Steven Spielberg and the guy reflecting light on Dakota Fanning had a dispute over how much reflection was enough. New Jersey. In his first good act as a father, Ray shields her from the dead bodies and carries her away. But, and I hate to bring this up, this girl still needs to pee. Sit back and put on your seatbelt. Why put on your seatbelt? Put on your seatbelt, Rachel. Why would you say this? The car is under attack by pedestrians. And sure, they are banging the car, and that's scary, but they are not going to cause any kind of action that necessitates a seatbelt. Especially when you will very clearly need to exit this vehicle quickly and let the mob have it. I don't blame Ray for not stopping and telling people how this car got fixed, but I am totally floored that nobody else has thought of change the solenoid, even though I fundamentally disagree with that technique working. Vehicular manslaughter. Look, movie, you can't show me the van this close to running over the person holding the baby, cut to a reaction shot, and have Ray somehow not run over the person holding the baby. I don't want the person with the baby to be run over, but goddamn. <laughs> the human race. Look, I'm all for a wall of missing relatives during a crisis, but many of these posters are completely blocking or partially blocking other posters for missing people. Look here at the right side of your screen, where Kari Judkin's poster is nuking the poster of the guy behind her in the blue tie. Can't even see that poor f***er's name. And below him, still on the left, another pic that looks like South Park and no name visible at all. I really hope Kari Judkin's family is proud of how they put their missing child above all others. This train comes barreling through the line crossing, on fire, but... Wouldn't this train have a dead man switch that would stop it as soon as a conductor, you know, die? During this human evacuation mission, why the f*** are there so many cars on the goddamn rescue ferry? Did the rich people get early notice to come put their Porsches and Lambos on the boat? Those trees are funny. Squeaky Fromm is right! There is something funny about those trees. Like, for instance, the tripods that would tower over these trees are somehow not visible yet, despite the funny things they're doing to them. Look, I guess I understand these people wanting to get onto the boat, but then what? You're sitting ducks at that point. Why not try and run somewhere else? The boat isn't going to save you. Anyway, it doesn't matter. The aliens conveniently decide not to fire their rad lasers anywhere during this until Ray gets on the boat. Not to belabor the point, but look at all these goddamn cars on this goddamn ferry that just rejected hundreds of humans because the goddamn ferry was goddamn full already. Full of cars! <laughs> Guys, I can see why the people got totally freaked out about this back in 1938. The alien version of A River Runs Through It is a horror movie to us, but on their planet, it's just a standard drama about brothers. Also, as I see the tripod scooping up humans, I've got to ask, why? 
They f***ing annihilated everyone in sight back in New York, but now they're just picking out humans like they're at the farmer's market. Oh, okay. So, in the water, aliens pick you up and uber you somewhere later. On land, your ass is grass. Are these clothes of the captured humans? Why do the aliens disrobe the humans? And how? And also, why? Later, it looks like they're juicing these people, so the clothes falling from the sky make no sense and should be bloody at the very least. You can't juice a clothed human and have whole, clean shirts and pants that you then drop like snowflakes. Why are so many random citizens running up the hill after the military? Are they volunteering to fight? Don't move! Don't move! Ray leaves his young daughter behind so that he can track down his f***head son. There's absolutely no reason why he can't keep carrying her or at least make her come with him, other than the movie needs a scene where some randoms try and kidnap her for more drama. I need to be here. I want to see this. The absolute dumbest part of this movie, and there are a few candidates, is when Robbie decides to run away from his father and sister to join the military or some sh only to end up magicking himself into the final scene. It's dumb. It's stupid and dumb. Robbie is a f***ing moron. Yes! Ray sees his daughter being taken like Liam Neeson's daughter in that movie I can't remember the name of, and apparently he has the same particular set of skills that Liam does because he doesn't give two f***s about Rachel getting taken away. Guess he just knows she won't be lost forever. Oh. Rachel told you at least twice her dad was 30 feet away and you f***ing ignored her. Considering that these people don't even seem to be classic kidnappers, what the f*** was all that about? I both understand and do not understand why you would seek shelter with the first guy who has an open basement door and a shotgun. Ah, sudden Andy Dufresne. Also, this is really the movie's biggest misstep. This weird-ass creeper Tim Robbins basement bullshit. I'd rather these 13 minutes or so have been spent with Tom and Dakota just chilling in the basement of some really nice old couple that made good peach cobbler. He sings the lyrics to Little Deuce Coop while crying, and there's no crying in Beach Boys! They buried him right under our feet since before the, there were even people here. I thought the aliens regarded our planet with envious eyes. So why did they come here to bury tripods under the ground so they could attack many years later? Why not just take the planet before any dominant life started to show up? I understand there are many factors here, like the space-time continuum and how much Matthew McConaughey loves his daughter. These are things you just can't account for. But the way this story is set up, it suggests the aliens were observing us in what we would call the present, but sent probes well before we were even here. I guess knowing that they'd have to kick somebody's ass eventually? Greatest lie the devil ever told was making you believe Tom Cruise and Tim Robbins were only about five inches apart in height. I have a daughter. Why did you bring us here? He didn't bring your ass anywhere, dude. You willingly ran into the first basement you found. Jesus Christ, these aliens have started to become thorough. Surely inspecting individual houses is not something they have time for. For charlatan. This is Peak Spielberg! Even though he knows how to evade the searching technology by completely immersing himself in an ice-cold bath like he did in Minority Report, Ray chooses not to do that here. This f***ing alien probe is about to be fooled by a mirror. A species light years away and far more advanced than us has somehow not invented a mirror. Despite the eye of this f***ing thing being reflected of his f***ing... I think it's weird the aliens are going this far to check out the house, but it is doubly weird that they care so much that they've been probing it for like four minutes. Maybe they heard a noise or something, but why do they give a sh**? Why can't they just blow up the house and leave? God damn f***ing feet! Then Ray or Rachel remove the shoe and leave it here behind the mirror so that the probe would stupidly look at the shoe and investigate no further. This is an advanced alien race, folks. I'm glad Rachel didn't scream during this jump scare. I really am, but still just not believable. Hey Larry, after we're done with this place, let's call ourselves the Wet Bandits. He's only just now loading that shotgun? Gory hole. These aliens are now rummaging through family heirlooms and sh**. It's almost like they have no purpose except to add suspense and time to this movie. Harlan calls Ray over to the window because something f***ed up is going on, but when Ray gets there, whatever it is that Harlan is yelling about doesn't happen until Ray looks out the window. Now, maybe they poked some other poor bastard with a needle when Harlan was yelling, but there is no evidence of that anywhere outside. Also, everything once again seems needlessly complicated. Why do you bring a guy into the tripod only to drop him on the ground later and stick him with a needle when you could just do that while he's on the ship? It looks like they even have a special tentacle for the needle applications. I mean, are the aliens doing this so that Ray and the audience can see it? Wave goodbye. Who cares the day? Murdering to a lullaby. Also, Tim Robbins' character somehow f***ing senses that he's about to get attacked. I don't know if I care all that much that Harlan is making so much noise that he's putting Ray and his daughter in danger. Are we sure there isn't some duct tape down here that he could use to cover Harlan's mouth before going straight to the I gotta murder him idea? Has he even thought maybe there's a way to leave this place? Imagine how bad they both must smell right now. Wow, it was really easy to get to sleep after murdering that man. 
Are you trying to tell me that this probe went down the stairs blind and somehow knew there was someone here before opening the flaps to expose its eye? It's a massive cheat. These tentacles have been making all the noise when they go down the stairs, but now it goes stealth mode and operates in a completely different manner than we've been shown. Rachel! Where were the other drugs going? Hey! Even if this had a chance to hurt the tripod, your daughter's in the tripod, dude. I still don't understand what makes someone a suck-your-blood candidate versus a vaporize-you-instantly candidate. For an alien species that is trying to round up human beings, these human being cages are remarkably small. They hold, like, 30 people max. And it's not like they aren't so high off the ground they can't extend these baskets lower. Ray gets pulled out of the mouth of the alien ship, and seconds later his D-pin grenades explode and destroy the ship. And I'm just wondering, what was Ray thinking pulling those grenade pins before he had any clue he would be rescued? He was in that alien up to his last wrist. As always, the sin is, this works. This basket of alien kidnapped people lands in a tree, and I don't think anyone here was pierced by a tree branch, which, as you know, would be impossible. Hurry, let's try and find another guy with an open basement and a shotgun! I guess these people were able to walk from New Jersey to Massachusetts without running into any more alien shenanigans. As they walk hand in hand into Boston, I'm shocked she only had to pee that one time. Look at the goddamn birds! <laughs> The movie gives Tom Cruise's dense character Ray a hero moment when he notices something that apparently none of the soldiers can, even though these soldiers have been dealing with the shield problem for the last two days and should already notice this shit. I mean, shit. Did Awen get a premonition that her husband was walking down the road holding their daughter? By the way, it's kind of weird the aliens came to Boston and everyone Ray knows is safe inside the house. As if this huge city was an afterthought and they died just before they could do any real damage. These aliens hammered all kinds of cities across the world, but they somehow missed Boston so there could be a happy ending. How the f did Robbie get here safely after running away from Ray and Rachel? F*** you for asking, you dick! Honestly, were they setting up a sequel? Did Justin Chatwin insult Scientology halfway through filming so he got written out? What the f*** happened with Robbie? From the moment the invaders- God damn it! From the moment the invaders arrived, breathed our air, ate, and drank, they were doomed. Morgan Freeman basically reads from the H.G. Wells novel to tell us that a virus killed the aliens, and yeah, advanced alien race somehow didn't know about that sh You have a disease! Baseball season's over. You wanna have a catch? Meteor sh Is it hot? No. It's cold! Damn cold! I mean, Jerry, all the way down motor here. oil is the lifeblood of a car. Okay, you put in a low-grade oil, you can damage vital engine parts. Okay, see this gasket? I have no confidence in that gasket. Ooh, watch yourself, it's the claw! <laughs> Ooh, the claw's coming at you! This is a blues riff and B. Watch me for the changes and try and keep up, okay? I love the smell of napalm in the morning. And I said, why? Why do you do this? Because it's the one thing you can't replace. After all, tomorrow is another day. Rachel! 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 Rachel!